it can be exculpatory for you, meaning that it excludes you as a suspect. I know, my vernacular is very good. This is David Wright. He thinks he's very smart, as you'll see in a minute, via this rather entertaining interrogation. But the fact of the matter is that David is a killer, having shot a man in cold blood after said man's girlfriend pepper sprayed his friend. It all began when David accompanied two friends to a jack-in-the-box at 3.40 a.m. David brought a gun with him to accompany his two friends who had set up a drug deal at the jack-in-the-box. Except this drug deal was actually a setup for a robbery on both sides. The couple who claimed they wanted to buy drugs intended to rob the three men and the three men who were to supply the drugs also had a plan to rob the drug purchasers. When everyone met at the jack-in-the-box, both sides tried to rob the other. The man and the woman, outmanned, decided to flee and made their way to the parking lot. David and another accomplice followed. Once in the parking lot, the four squared up. The woman pepper sprayed David's accomplice in the face and David responded by shooting her man dead. David and friends then left the jack-in-the-box and buried the gun. They were home free, except for the multiple cameras in the area that put all the players at the scene of the crime. David, however, doesn't have a care in the world. He knows he can run circles around the police with his words alone. This is the result. All right, man. I think he's... So I'm going to record our conversation. It just makes it easier for me to go back. Um, there's no question as to why you're here at this point, right? I mean, it's been in the media. And um, we've had four people arrested already, so I don't have any big secrets to hold for me at this point, right? I was just told when they arrested me that I was being arrested for murder. So. Okay. All right. So let me just go over this stuff real quick with you, and then we'll, uh, we'll get started, okay? Okay. Uh, so, if you can just state your full name and your date of birth for me. David Randall Wright, May 13th, 1987. Okay. And it is February 20th, 2019, and the time is currently 12.17. And David, do you understand that this statement is being recorded? Yes. Okay. Um, go over your rights with you real quick here. So, David, do you understand that you have the right to remain silent, that any statement you make can and will be used as evidence against you in a court of law? that you have the right at this time to an attorney of your own choosing, to have him present and to consult with him before and during any questioning or the making of any statement and at all other stages of these proceedings, that if you desire but cannot afford an attorney of your own choosing, one will be appointed for you at public expense, and that you may exercise your rights at any time. Do you understand these rights? Yes. Okay. Having those rights in mind, are you willing to talk to the police at this time? Yes. Okay. So, like I said, I mean, it's already been in the media. Four people have been arrested. Um, it's not like we don't know what happened to some extent, you know, we're a few days into this, so a lot of investigation has gone into this thus far. Um, but there's always more that we don't know from every single party, right? Everybody has a little piece of the puzzle. We don't necessarily get the truth from everybody. So I would like to hear from you what happened. No, I have no clue because I am just now hearing about this. So. I know that a good friend of mine is, we went to bail him out the other day, and the charge of murder popped up for him. Okay. Who's that? Uh, Chris Phelps. Okay. Is he a buddy, or is he actually your cousin? He's like family, but he's not blood or biologically related, no. Okay. All right. So, I mean, the whole, I don't know what you're talking about, is kind of out the door at this point. Man, I got several people who have already identified you. You're identified on video. So it's not a question of that you were there. It's more a question of what led up to this, what was supposed to happen, because I don't think this is what was actually supposed to happen. I don't think that it was your plan to go out there and kill somebody that day. But something happened. Right? So you're just going to play that that you have no idea what happened because you weren't there? I was not, no. I know you were there. 
I've seen your communications with people about it. I mean, there's no question, man. So for you to sit here and tell me that, that you weren't there is kind of ridiculous at this point. It's not helpful to you, really, to just be quiet and not say anything. Because what I have are people who are looking out for themselves. They're not looking out for you. They're looking out for number one because they don't want to catch charge. So they're going to dime you off. They're not and looking out for you. So you believe somebody that's going to tell you that somebody else did something to save their own ass? Well, with all the additional evidence, yes. But that is part of why I want to talk to you. Because maybe they're telling me something different about what really happened, what really went down there. I'm not going to believe 100% what they told me. Yeah, that's good. You probably shouldn't. Because if they're telling there. me you're the one who was the one who was planning this stuff, do I believe that? I don't know. Should I? I don't because I know more than that. But playing the whole, I wasn't there, it's not helpful to you, man. You're not helping yourself out. I've been out of jail for all of a week and a half. I've spent almost every minute of it with my girlfriend. So, as for, did I plan to kill anybody? Did I kill anybody? No, I didn't. Okay. So when I look at the GPS on your phone, it's not going to tell me that, it's going to tell me that you were with your girlfriend the whole time, that you never were. We're over at Jack in the Box. You should. And the only reason you might tell me that is because maybe you didn't take your phone. Or maybe somebody else had my phone. Hmm. It's been known to happen quite often, actually. Okay. Who's your girlfriend? Her name's Katie. Okay. You got a phone number for Katie? Yes, I do. Four two five six one zero five four three five. So this happened Saturday to Sunday. Where were you on Saturday and Sunday? I want to say is it Friday or Saturday. I know either Friday or Saturday night. <clears throat> Her and I were at my friend Greg's house all night, most of the night. Till like seven o'clock in the morning. Um, not sure if that was Friday or Saturday, though. Okay. Um, and where does Greg live? Just uh, past Madison on Old Broadway. It's, I think its address is six zero zero four McDougal. Okay. What's his last name? Do you know it? Huffman. He's easiest reached by Facebook. Sure. His phone number is inconsistent. And, okay, so let's say that was Friday or Saturday night. Where would you be the following night? Um, either at home. Well, I'm sorry, where is home for you? I've been staying with a friend of mine over off of 2nd Ave. The 113 something address? Yeah. Okay. So you're saying that you were just home the entire weekend? I've been home most of the weekend because I've been trying to stay clean for DOC and it's not conducive to me doing so. I'm not running around going places where I know people get high. Okay. Did anybody else have your phone this weekend? My phone has been I left it in one person's car, mm -hmm. and it took me a day and a half to get it back. When was that? Uh, yeah. That was earlier in the week, and then I let somebody use my phone. They were supposed to just go to 7-Eleven to go meet somebody they were selling something to an offer up, mm -hmm. and they had apparently seven or eight things that they had to do between then and when they got back to the house. So what day was that? I don't know. Okay. And who was that? That was a guy that goes by Memphis. 
It's a nickname. I think his uh, first name's Joe. Black guy. I know Memphis. <clears throat> well, what day was that? When you were gonna, it's only a couple days ago, man. Like if we were talking to you a month after this happened, I could understand you maybe not remembering. I don't remember the exact days on that stuff. I, you know, I don't really pay attention to the days unless it's the day I have to go check into DLC. Or like today where I have an appointment that I'm supposed to be at at 1 o'clock. It's like two days ago. It's two days ago. Like I said, I don't really pay attention to the days. Okay. What's your phone number? Mine? Yeah. He is. Different than the one I have for you. Do you no longer have the 905 number? That number is a secondary number. Okay, so the phone that's in the truck, what number is that? I believe that is the 905 and the 345 number. Okay. It's registered for both of them. One's a text now and one's an actual family mobile number. And who's your service through? Uh, Walmart Family Mobile. So you're sitting there for a murder one charge. I would expect you to kind of rack your brain a little bit more if you didn't do the crime to help me rule you out as the suspect for you. In any stores or any locations that I can put you on video somewhere? Not if I've been home. I agree. I'm just asking you. Like if you, if there's something that I could use to, to rule you out, I'm more than happy to. The last thing I want to do is put an innocent person in uh, jail and potentially prison for 20 years off a crime they didn't do. That's not my style. So I want to give you the opportunity to, to help me rule you out. If you rule me out, I go in a different direction. I, to be honest with you, that's unlikely, but I'm, I'm open-minded to it. I've been surprised before. I'll be honest, I was surprised in this case already. So... Not as surprised as I am. Well, yeah, that's not true, but... I'm not trying to be you know, a dick or anything, but I mean, you know why you're here and what's going on. I mean, at this point, you're literally the last person we've talked to. And the only person that has a, an allegiance to you is Chris. So, I mean, obviously people are not going to be shy about telling us who was there and who did what. And plus, we have video, which you know because you guys called the 7-Eleven to see if they had video. So... Jack in the box. Jack in the box, excuse me. Lord. <laughs> There's video at the Chevron. There's video at the Shell. You know that we have all your co-suspects under arrest. Like, all I want from you is a reason. I understand what happened. I just need to know why. The only person I know you have under arrest is Chris. Okay. We have Cody under arrest. Brianna's actually under arrest, too, because she was stupid. And we have Tannehill, what's his name, Ray? Ray. He's in custody as well. We have his car. The car that was used. The car that was at Chevron in our impound. They are all under arrest. You were the last. Chris is under arrest because we viewed messages on the phones that organized picking you up. The same messages from you to Cody. We have them on their phone. We've already viewed them. We have the Facebook communications between Chris and Brianna setting up the deal that happened where you guys showed up at the Chevron and walked down. I'm just being straight with you because I, this is how this plays out. Your girlfriend's going to be dumb enough to provide you an alibi on a murder charge. And then she's going to get roped up in a murder as an accessory. If you care about that person, you have just set her up for failure. So I'm letting you know, as trying to be decent with you, like this isn't a, we're going to trick you into saying something. This is a explain what happened because it matters for you later. You're going to be charged with murder one. Whether it stays murder one, that's up to the prosecutor. If you're cooperative, you know from past cases, I'm assuming, that that charge can change up and down. So 
I'm just asking you to make a decision, and I'm not going to sit here and, and talk to you for 45 minutes and try to beat it out of you, because that's not where we're at. We're beyond us trying to trick you into saying something. That's why I just laid out for you kind of where we're at, because there's no game that I need to play at this point. And if you want your girlfriend jammed up because you just set her up for it, then that's your choice. You know, can't threaten me with jamming her up. It's not a threat, man. I'm just telling you how it plays out. Like, I'm going to go talk to her, and she's going to be dumb enough to lie for you. When I got video evidence that she, you weren't with her, and you just told me you were with her all weekend, and she's going to tell me that. So that's I'm not that's not a threat. I'm, I'm telling you what's going to happen because I have to continue the investigation because you've now provided an alibi that i got to walk down. That's just what has to happen. I'm not threatening you. I'm telling you how this plays out so that it doesn't have to play out that way. Because you're involving her. You're being, you're being dumb by doing that. And I'm trying to be upfront with you about it because I'm not trying to be a dick to you. I don't know where you guys think you get your information from wasn't there. Then tell me where you were. I was either at home or I was at Greg's. Okay. It's one of the two with places. With your girlfriend the entire time, right? 90% of the time. 95% of the time. She's right with me. Okay. And when would you not have been with her? Um, if I went over to my friend Leah's house at all. She doesn't go to Leah's because her and Leah don't get along. Okay, well, when did that happen if that did happen? I've been there twice since I've been out of jail. Okay, so you've been out a week and a half. Um, like, it, dude, I get it. Like, you had a quick come up, right? I, I get it. I don't, I don't think you were a stone-cold killer. I don't. That's not you. Like, I mean, I don't know if you remember me. At all, I have a face that's pretty hard to forget, but I chased you around North Everett when you were Harry Potter, right? You remember that? Well, you've had a lot of contact with officers back mm -hmm. when you were a kid and toting knives and, and just being doing dumb kid stuff, right? So I don't, I don't believe you're that guy. Like, I think this was a mistake, but if this is your time to bring that forward. Like, if you accidentally shot the dude because you flinched or you got scared, because of something he did, now is the time. If you come up with that stuff later, nobody is going to believe a word you say. How the fuck would somebody accidentally shoot somebody? Because if your finger's on the trigger, it's called a sympathetic reflex. It happens to police officers all the time. I think that's a term that's been come up with just to cover their asses for shooting people. Well, you can try to make it about that. I'm talking about you. I wouldn't know. Never shot anybody before never have okay never even shot an animal so where are we at then man i mean you're, you're unwilling to provide me with some stuff that i can uh, rule you out so where do i go from here And you're the police officer, reverse roles. You're, you're the cop. You're sitting over here trying to figure out if this dude has any remorse for what he did or if he's just worried about getting in trouble. How would you proceed? I'm not worried about getting in trouble, but I didn't do shit. Okay. Think you've got some people that might have said that I did to cover their own asses? Yeah, your phone is too, man. Like, like, it's been long enough that we've gotten the stuff, right? I'll just be up front with you. We got Cody's phone. The one that shows your phone number and your address and the communications between you two. Like, I have it. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just laying it out for you because that's what I met up with somebody doesn't mean that I went with him to go do something. This is the first sign of progress being made, as David recants his story to a degree, admitting to have met with Cody. 
With one foot in the door, the detectives know that presenting evidence does work with this suspect and getting the suspect to change his lies to confessions of the truth. Their goal now is to see whether they can take this route all the way to a full confession of a murder. Okay, so when did you meet up with Tony? Um, probably one, two o'clock in the morning, something like that. On what day? Maybe Saturday or Sunday. Okay, where did you meet up? Uh, over by my house. Okay, and who was with him? Dad, I don't know. Was he alone? When I met up with him, yes. So why did you meet up with the dude that you didn't know? Because my friend Chris had asked me to. Okay. And so what happened after that? Well, he had tried to proposition me for a handgun. Mm-hmm. I told him I didn't have one. Okay. So. Did you say why? No. Are you sure? Because I'm pretty sure from remembering what communications you guys had, you would have known before you met. He didn't give me any specifics or details. Chris had said something about he had an issue. But the details on what the issue were, I didn't really pay attention to. If the guy's got money and he's going to buy a gun and I've got one, I'm going to give it to him. Okay. Did he have money? No, he didn't have money and I didn't have a gun to sell him at the time that he was interested in. So, and I'll just be up front with you, man. I'm not interested in any other crazy charges, that, anything like that. It doesn't matter at this point, right? You understand? So, I'm interested in solving a, a murder that happened. If that's what it was. Well, you got somebody that's dead. Doesn't mean it's a murder. There's all kinds of different homicides and levels, and some are justified, some are not. I have no specifics or anything like that. Okay, so where did you meet up with uh, the dude, Cody? Over by my house. Yeah, but what does that mean? There's a lot of stuff over by your house. Like, at your house? Like on the corner of the side street because I don't bring people to my house. Bring a lot of people to your house. We've been watching it for a few days. Not anymore. <laughs> well, Ever true. since somebody was supposedly ran there with a stolen car or from a stolen car and the cops tracked them there, yeah. there's been next to nobody coming by. Okay. Comparatively uh, speaking to how it used to be. Well, granted, you were off the, off the chain down there for a minute. Um, so where on the corner then did you meet him? Over by like 113th and whatever the, there's a side road up the road a little ways. Okay. And then, so he asked to buy a gun. I, mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Explain the conversation to me and, and how it ended if it did. Well, he wanted to buy a handgun. Yeah. And he said that... So I was going to sell him a shotgun. Right. But that was unacceptable for his ride. Oh, okay. Why? Because I guess his ride didn't want to be riding around with a shotgun in the car. Understandable. Okay. Well, more legal than a handgun, but okay. Not if you're a felon. <laughs> Granted, neither one is, but I'm saying. Um, okay. And then, so he still came and met you, even though you, you told him? Yeah. Well, he came to meet me before I had even told him that I couldn't find another handgun. Okay. And I told him I would make some calls and see if I could wrestle one up for him. By the time he made it there, I hadn't found one. And you said another handgun. Why did you say that one? Because I had recently sold one to somebody else that he knows. Okay. And then, so you guys meet up, and you have this conversation, then what happens? He leaves. And how did he leave? Well, I walked back to my house, and he walked back to whatever vehicle he was in. Okay. 
Why did you leave that out when we first started talking? I think that might be important that the guy under arrest for murder came to your house looking for a gun. Well, if I had given him a gun, then I think that that would be important. Well, it shows his intent. I mean, of course it's relevant to the case, right? People buy guns for all sorts of reasons now. Yeah, but in this instance, there was a murder with the guy that had just come to your house. I just asked you about. So I'm asking you why you left that out. And you didn't tell me until recently that he was the one arrested for murder. That's not true. You said, like, we can rewind 30 minutes into this conversation, if you'd like, where I named everybody off prior to that. So I'm not trying to make you wrong. I'm just trying to tell you, like, you left that out. I'm wondering why. Because the, the answer is obvious, right? You just recently in this conversation let me know that Cody was one of the ones involved saying that you had communications between him and I. And well, I, I explained to you who everybody was that was arrested. So when I laid, I laid out the five people, that was a while in the past. I'm just, like, when I named his name back then, I mean, I, we can go back to the tape. It's all being reported, right? But, I mean, you would have, I would have been like, oh, yeah, that too came to my house. I mean, the fact that you didn't mention it, I mean, you obviously understand how that looks, right? Like you're trying to hide something. Well, being as I'm a convicted felon and I'm you know, trafficking firearms, yeah. that might be something I would like to hide. <laughs> Granted. No matter what somebody's using them for. Okay. Do you have any firearms at your house right now? Nope. Okay. Is your, is your girlfriend home? She should be. Is she a convicted felon? No, she's not. Okay. So they went on their way, just the Cody dude, and did you actually talk to the other guy in the car? How does he know who you are then? Maybe my name was mentioned when they were coming to meet me. But he didn't see you. Unless he seen me when he was parked. But you didn't see the car. I didn't look for the car. Unless I'm coming to meet somebody at their vehicle, I don't ask what vehicle they're in. Well, that's not, and again, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not trying to insult you, but that's not very smart. Meeting somebody to sell guns, and you're not going to watch around you to see where they come and go? Like, you you are smarter than that. That's why I'm saying that's not very smart. It was smart. referred you to me by somebody that. that I trust. Okay. I would still be on my six. Right? I mean, because even if, you know, Chris referred him to you, then it doesn't matter because this is some dude you don't know. He may be people with Chris, but he ain't your people. So, like, for you to tell me you weren't watching and looking and, and then you didn't see the car where he went from, like, you're going to watch that dude the whole time. So, did you see what kind of car he got into? I didn't. Okay. Well, explain to me how his, his partner was able to pick you out of a montage, too. I have no clue. Neither do I. That's why it's weird if you weren't there with them. Explain to me how you were on the Shell video behind Shell Station. Explain that one to me. I don't know. I'm asking for an explanation. Back by the power boxes. Or getting out of the car at the Chevron. Well, I need that explanation if you weren't there, because it has to make sense. If you didn't go, how were you in the car? So at this point, I'm just being, for, like, what you say matters, and it matters now. It doesn't matter, like, in the next year. It probably doesn't matter in the next five years. But you know when it matters? In the next 10 to 20 years, that's when it matters. You understand what I'm saying? Like the back end of this is what matters, not the front end. I have enough felony points, it doesn't matter at it all. It absolutely does matter. You want to know why? Because it matters what your charging is. 
it matters 100%. You know the charge of what murder one carries, I'm assuming. You can estimate that murder two, manslaughter one, manslaughter two, those carry significantly less time. It does matter. Because you point out on a, for example, murder two is a lot different than you pointing out, for example, on a murder one. So if you can explain what happened and it fits a different criteria, that affects your charging. If you sit there and you lie to me and say you weren't there when I have, a, and I just be a pro, I have an unbelievable amount of proof that you were there and this is no hustle. I've hustled people before and you can tell I'm not hustling you. That matters, not up front, but on the back end. You're a young man. I'm looking for the reason why. And I'm looking for you to own what happened. Because there's a bunch of other people that are being charged with murder one. And I don't know if that's appropriate. And it's the accessory rule is why all these people are being charged with murder one. Now, you may not have any allegiance to the other two most, but Chris, who was a part of the planning, is also wrapped up in the murder one charge which you know because you went and realized that when you use that jail. So all of that stuff matters and pretty much matters what you say. I still say I don't know what you're talking about. Fair enough, man. Do you have remorse? If I killed somebody, I probably would. Honestly, don't know where to go from here. I, I, I didn't expect the response that I just got because I didn't think you were that person. So, you, I mean, you understand how this plays out from here, right? Because I laid it out for you. Yeah, I go to jail. You ask my girlfriend if I've been there. She'll tell you whatever the hell she tells you. You yeah, might ask my buddy Greg if I'd been there. He'll tell you whatever he tells you. Should you choose to charge them, then so be it. But. Dude, it's not my style to dick with people like that. I'm pretty straight shooter when it comes to this stuff because, you know, like I said, your situation isn't going to change. Like, I, I'm not a vindictive guy. But if you tell me that she is your alibi, I have to go ask her that. I have to. Because if I don't, your defense attorney will be like, you didn't follow up my client's alibi and you charged him because you didn't like him or whatever they, nonsense they say. So I don't have a choice. Like, I'm going to have to go talk to her if you're telling me that she's providing you an alibi on the weekend, that you didn't leave the house. I don't have a choice. Well, if you call her and ask her to come down and talk to you, she will. Okay. I understand. And I'm trying not to be a dick. Can you respect that? Like, I'm trying to be decent with you. I didn't have to mm -hmm. tell you any of this stuff. Cause, cause and whatever you're telling me, I think you're full of shit on it. Because I didn't really, do anything. Do you really? I've given you enough information to know, so you know that I have the knowledge that I have. You know that there's cameras at 7-Eleven, or I keep saying 7-Eleven, at Jack in the Box. You know that. Because you were smart enough to call and ask. Yeah, no. Sure wasn't. Yeah, okay, look, whatever. I'm just telling you, you know that there are cameras. And if you're as smart as you as I think you were, you know there's cameras at the Shell station, and you know there's outside cameras at the Shell at the Chevron because they're visible. You could just walk over there and see that. And there's cameras everywhere. Right, and you did it in like one of the most well uh, surveilled places because of the amount of crime that occurs at that location. 
like that's the main drug meet in South Everett, right? I mean, that's where dudes go to do their their exchanges. So I, I'm at a loss. All of these other people are going to be affected by your decisions. I mean, they are affected by your decision. It was the decision that fast that I'm sure you've thought in your head over and over again that I want to take that back. It was a mistake. But that fast is going to equate to years for other people. It had nothing to do with that decision you made. But because the way the law is written, that you guys were there to do a robbery, it's a murder in the first degree. That's why it's at that level. Got nothing? That's it? Well, apparently, every time I say something, you think I'm lying, so why say anything at all? Well, well, look, man, you can pretend you're upset, but you're not. I mean, I, I, I've proved I'm that you're lying. Not upset. I'm just, logically, if you're going to fucking call me a liar, there's no point in me saying anything. I don't think I ever called you a liar. I said that you... I'm, I'm asking you to come clean about not being at home with your girlfriend Saturday night. Because you obviously had your phone Saturday night, right? Because you met up with Cody and you communicated with him via phone. So that ain't the night you didn't have your phone. Respectfully, there are not a lot of dudes out there wearing glasses that do crime. It's pretty rare, like for me to have two oh, in one shit. case. Two in one case. I'm telling you, I, I do this for a living. Like I'm, I'm just telling you, like. The detective mentions his surprise that the primary suspect in this crime wears glasses. He states that this is uncommon in his experience. In fact, psychological research tells us little about the connection between wearing glasses and criminality. However, the literature on personality traits, the personality traits of those who wear glasses, shows that glasses wearers are typically lower in two personality traits, extroversion and openness. That is, those who wear glasses are more likely to keep to themselves and eschew novel experiences as well as ideas than those who do not wear glasses. Yet, these two personality traits are not statistically linked to criminality. Although a handful of studies have found that introverted people are less likely to commit violent crime, the majority of studies on this subject found no such link. The personality traits that have absolutely definitively been linked with crime due to the vast number of studies on the subject are high neuroticism, low agreeableness, and low conscientiousness. That is, crazy, angry, and irresponsible people are more likely to engage in crime. And from what we know about the personality traits of those who wear glasses, we can make no conclusion as to whether someone wearing glasses is more likely to be crazy, angry, or irresponsible, and thus a potential criminal. The detective here is likely just displaying his own biases. Yeah, probably initially, I was surprised that you were the, the second suspect. Because obviously, a dude with glasses who sets up the deal, like I figured it was, it was Chris. So that was where I was surprised in this case. I was like, like they're telling me, no, man, dude's name is Dave. I'm like, stop, stop fucking lying. Right? Because I'm like, there's no way. Like, Chris sets up the deal. He's not the dude who's doing it. Like...
So what I need from you is where the gun ended up and where you're closing it up. That's what I'm looking for for you, for your cooperation. Because right now your cooperation is all that you have. What clothes or gun you're talking about? The clothes you're wearing Saturday night. Where are those? I probably put them in the hamper so they'd be washed. Okay. So you're, the clothes you're wearing Saturday night are at your place? More than likely. What does that mean? Well, I have been known to change clothes at two other places, but I don't think that I was there. So. Okay. And what were you wearing Saturday, do you remember? Um, or specifically Sunday morning. Yeah. yeah, Saturday night late. After you met with, when you when you met with Cody, what were you wearing? Blue jeans, white t-shirt. Okay. Probably either a zip-up sweater or a pullover sweater, because it's been cold out. Okay. What color would that be? Um, almost every one that I own is black. I have one dark blue one. Okay. Did you go to any convenience stores that day? Just stayed home all day? Well, I didn't necessarily stay home, but... Okay, well, let's get into that. Where'd you go? Because you told me earlier you had stayed home the entire time. So, you know, I go meet people out on the street or a couple blocks away. Like walking down, you mean? Yeah, I walk to go meet them, yes. Ever drive? Don't have a driver's license, don't have a vehicle anymore either. Hmm. Where'd you get that van that you had? I bought it from a friend of mine. Okay. I paid 600 bucks for it. And then he never gave me the paperwork like he was supposed to, so. Yeah, he didn't have the paperwork, that's why. He said he had an affidavit in lieu of title. Um, so, is there any video that I could see that puts you in some certain clothes somewhere that wouldn't match my suspect's clothes? Let's see. Um, later in the day Sunday, maybe. Oh, well, later in the day Sunday, if you had done this crime, you would have gotten rid of the clothes you were wearing, right? If I had known that there was a crime commit, yeah. and I was the one that did it, I probably would have. Okay. But. Okay, so where were you later in the day on Sunday? Let's, let's do that. Or can I see what you were wearing then? Well, I walked from my house, took the inner urban trail, over to Leah's house over by Silver Lake. Mm -hmm. And then me and Katie got a ride back from there, from Chris, and I stopped at the little Asian store on 112th across from 7-Eleven. Do you know where that is? Can you give me a little more specifics? Which 7-Eleven? Which the one the on, on, on 7th and 112th. And then so the little place across the street in the... Yes, it's across uh, 7th, directly on 112th in the little strip mall. Yeah, like by Azell's Chicken in that same strip mall. Yes. And the little store is the furthest one to the left. Right. Right on 112. And you were there about what time? I don't remember. Oh, man, you got to make me watch an entire day of video? It was down? later. Like nighttime later? or? It was dark, yeah. Okay. Do you have your phone on you then? Actually, I don't think I did. I know I left my keys, my phone charger, my phone, and my wallet all at Leah's house and had to go back and get it. It's trusting of you. In the circles you know. I left in a hurry. Why? Because I had to go get some heroin for my girlfriend who was sick. Okay. Watching the other. Uh, it's 
right off a of tenth. I don't know the exact. So you clearly have a genuine distrust of the police. Is that fair to say? I distrust almost everybody. Fair. Detective Brenneman has pretty much laid out his cards. He's not holding back much of anything about this case. I'm being pretty upfront and honest with you about the information that we have. So, I mean, at this point, there's no tricks. Nobody's trying to pull the wool over your face there. Being honest with you about the information that we have, trying to give you an opportunity. And I, I, I mean, you've already said flat out you don't believe that, that he has that information. But I mean, with everything he's told you, you have to know that what he's telling you is true. Well, whatever you have, you've got from people that may not necessarily be giving you information for the best of reasons. So. Take the people out of this. Take them out. Who cares about the people? We've got other stuff. Communications and all those types of things. The video. So it's not just that people are telling us this. We're not relying 100% on people. If we did that, we'd be stupid, right? I like to think I'm not that dumb. So it's not just that we're relying on Dover's to give us information about homicide. You take a totality of everything that we have, and we know you're involved. And for you to sit here and just say that you, you don't have anything to do with it doesn't make any sense. I mean, at this point in the game, that does not make sense. It does nothing for you. Well, it does. It, it, quite frankly, it's a detriment to you. but it doesn't help you in any way, shape, or form. And I think you think that it does. I think that you guys have me confused with somebody else. Okay. Well, I mean, I, we can only throw you so many bones, man. We can sit here and go in circles all day long. Ultimately, that decision is up to you. Well, I think either way you're not going to believe me, so we should probably just go book me into the jail. I'll believe you if you tell me the truth. What's the truth? What you want to hear? I, I haven't presented you with any versions of what happened. I don't want to hear anything. I just want the truth. I honestly, I, don't, I know that this is like a TV show. To This is real life, man. This is your life not TV. Like, I don't, I don't get a promotion if you get charged with murder one. Nothing happens. I just move on to the next case. I don't have anything against you. I actually found, found you kind of funny when I used to chase you around back then. So, like, there's no ill will towards you. Like, for me, in my eyes, you're a guy who made a really bad decision and it was a split decision. If any, any, anybody understands that, it's us because we have people in that chair every day that do similar mistakes. You didn't go there to plan to murder somebody. Some people do, but you didn't. But now's the time to say that, like, because it matters. And like I said, it doesn't matter now. You're gonna get charged, you're gonna go to jail today, but it does matter on the back end. Because it, ma it matters a lot. And it matters as this person's family. And it matters to the people that are close to you. And it matters to the other suspects in this case. I mean, all of that matters. That's why I'm talking to you. Like, I could, I don't have to talk to you. The evidence is so strong, I could have just sent you over there. And you could go down for murder one. And you can enjoy however much time that is in custody. You can do that. Like, if that's how you want to do it, then do it. Like, that's cool. But 
I'm giving you the opportunity up front. I've thrown you a bone or two to explain to you where you're at. Like none of that had to happen. This isn't me coming at you and calling you a liar and all that stuff. This is me like trying to be straight with you that you're making really bad decisions right now based on your past, but this isn't like your past. This isn't a property crime. This isn't a stolen car or a dope charge. It's totally different. What we do is totally different. I don't have any ill will towards you. I really don't. Like if I, if, I, I hope that's come across. I've laid out for you what I have to do in this investigation. I've given you a heads up of what's going to happen to other people because you've provided them as alibis. Like I, I'm giving you that bone so that you could take that away if you want to. You can say, no, I wasn't with her the whole night. And you could say, that's all I want to say about that. You have that option. Like, I'm just trying to give it to you. I already told you, I leave periodically. Not very, ever gone for very long. So I consider myself as being there with her. Pretty much the whole night. Okay. Dude, you're not this guy. You know you're not this guy. If you were, this conversation would be different. Yeah, I'm obviously not this guy. I meant, I'm telling you I meant that the I'm dick that is letting everybody else go down for him. I meant that type of guy. That's not you. You have a reputation as being a stand-up dude. I think that whatever those guys did, that leads to you believing that they were accomplices and accessories and everything like that, Yeah. would be their own fucking fault if they fucking hang for it. Really? Even though, hypothetically, you're the person who pulled the trigger? So even though somebody else pulls the trigger, you're good with those guys going down. Your homie Chris, you're good with him going down. And I get it, you know what I mean? Allegiance to these other two dudes. I understand that. But you're good with Chris going down. Getting 20 years off of what you did. As an estimate, I'm guessing. I don't know what Murder One's going to, I don't know his points. But it's a lot. You're good with that? You guys have him orchestrating and setting up something like that. And that's an awful thing. It's his own fault that you shot somebody. It's his own fault that you didn't do things the right way. That's his fault. I ain't shoot nobody. Okay, so the person that shot this this other person, it, it's Chris's fault that that person did that. He should put himself around better people. Okay. <laughs> you know he's gonna read this, right? I mean, he's gonna have disclosure. It's fine. I'd much rather not see my friend get in trouble, but if by you saying that you guys want me to tell you that I did something that I didn't do. Fair enough. I don't want you to tell me that you did something you didn't do. That's not what I want. I want you to admit to what you did do. Because it's not even a question that you did it. So. Well, that, if it was a question, or not, wasn't a question, you wouldn't be sitting here trying to get me to admit to something I didn't do. I would, because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. You may not trust the police, but I don't want to jam up all these other dudes on a murder one charge for something you did. Because it's not right in my mind that other people go down for something that serious off of what somebody else did. It does matter. That's why you're here. I don't need to talk to you. I laid out my case to you. No other detective has ever done that to you before. If they did, they'd be stupid. If they're trying to trick you and they give you details on the case, that's not how you do it. It's police 101. You know that because you've been interviewed a bunch before. Like, I care about what happens to these other people, 
because they got involved in something and were stupid, and then you made a really bad decision, and you shot somebody, and now they're looking at 20 years off of something. If they got caught, they should do a couple. So I do care about that. That's why I'm talking to you. Well, you're talking to the wrong guy. You don't care about those dudes? I'm not saying I don't care about them. I'm saying that you're talking to the wrong guy. Why? Because I didn't do shit. That's and not, I think that, that's uh, not what innocent people say. No. Innocent people that actually give a fuck. Yeah, no. I, you know how many people I've had in that chair, man? Thousands. I don't, you don't give a fuck. You don't give a fuck. That's you. Like, in, enjoy your time. I don't care. Then I don't, I don't have any uh, hard feelings for you. I'm just going to move on to my next case. I just want you to know this isn't about you. This isn't personal. Like, you can say you don't care, but I actually think you do. I think you're being... Uh, so, with that said, so uh, you agree that uh, there's nothing more to say, right? If you don't want to talk to me, there isn't. Well, I don't want to talk to somebody that's going to keep on calling me a liar. I have yet to call you a liar. You've made the implication that I'm lying to you. Because you are. But there's a difference between calling someone a liar and then pointing out inaccuracies in their story. There's a big difference. One is disrespectful. The other is not. Yeah, well, if you perceive something to be one way, or are Have I been disrespectful to you? Have I been disrespectful to you? Have I insulted you or, or come at you hard or done anything other than You called me a liar. Yes, you did. You were lying. I'm not lying. Do you not freely admit that you lied to me in this interview? Where did I lie to you in this interview? About meeting up with Cody. We'll start there. About being home, not going out at all, and then now you periodically are going out. Would you not concede that both of those things were lies? Right. I don't go farther than a couple blocks from my house. On foot, to meet somebody very quickly and come back. Okay. That's not so, what you told me. You that's said, you don't leave your house? Home. I don't leave my house. I was home all weekend with my girlfriend. It's on tape, man. There ain't no secret. Like, Dude, I've got to walk my dog. Of course I leave the house periodically. Okay. But as for did I go anywhere? So you were never at Casino in Evergreen, anywhere near there within three or four blocks Saturday night. I just want, want to make sure that we have this down. Let's see. Something. How far is the Starbucks on Evergreen? Which Starbucks? The one on 75th. Yeah, no, I'm Too not far. talking about that. Okay, yeah, then no, I wasn't. Okay. So you're at the Starbucks on 75th? Earlier in the evening, yeah, like 8 or 9 o'clock, something like that. Well, that's not home. Did you lie to me? Can yeah. I, get a, I don't even get a smile out of that one. I didn't, I didn't get you on that one. I feel like I got you on that one. Didn't you I get you? Ask from what times didn't to I what get you? times? Didn't no, I get you didn't. You. I didn't get you on that one? That wasn't a lie? No, it wasn't. So you were at 8 o'clock there on, on uh, Saturday? There or thereabouts. Okay. You didn't go into the Starbucks? No. Were you with somebody? Yeah. Who? Another woman. Who was that? I'm not going to tell you that because she'd be very upset. Yeah, but it's a homicide. They can help prove that you weren't involved. How? Because if you're with her, right, that, that gets my timeline tighter. So you're with her from 8 to when? Not very long. Okay. So you don't Half wanna, hour at most. So you don't want to tell me who that is? I really don't. Okay. Were you in a car? You're on foot? I rode my bicycle. To 75th? Then how'd you get home? I got a ride from her with my bicycle in the back of her SUV. So there was a car. Did I get you there? I feel like I got you there too. No? You didn't lie to me about being, being in a car? I feel like you did. I wasn't in a car when I went to the Starbucks. I wasn't even at a car leaving the Starbucks. And you three years old, are you doing the, are you doing the six year old thing on me? Like. You're you an, an adult man. What kind of SUV was it? Oh, thanks. 
That's not helpful. Okay. You're a car guy. Who said I'm a car guy? <laughs> the people I have talked to. Oh, well, those people have lied to you. You don't know none about cars? I know how to put gas in them and drive them. Oh, okay. Was your girlfriend home when this person dropped you out? Probably. Is she cool with that? They didn't bring her inside. So you were on your bicycle Saturday at Starbucks. So that means you would have had to have ridden from your house, right? To Starbucks on your bike? Is that right? Mm -hmm. So is that near your house? Did I get you there? Look, you asked where I was. Yeah, Saturday I appreciate night, it. I'm Sunday just looking morning. for honesty, man. I mean, uh, at this point, I am I feel comfortable that you have lied to me several times. I'm looking for honesty so that I can rule you out. If you asked where I was Saturday night, Sunday morning. I did. Yeah. So, Sunday morning, late Saturday night. Yeah. Doesn't cover 8 or 9 o'clock in the evening. Oh, okay. So, then let's rewind. So, Saturday morning to 8 o'clock, where were you? Most of the time, at home. Can you just lay it out for me? Why do I got to like, pull it out of you? Like, just, I'm asking where you were, man, so I can rule you out. If you've been watching the suspect for this entire interrogation until now, you will have noticed that he only holds a single position, and he does it for an astounding 58 minutes. Only now does he change his posture. At first, he touches his face and adjusts his hat. The fact that the detective does not want to play any more semantic games with David, now demanding a direct answer, has seemingly frustrated David. This fact will become clearer in a minute when the detective once more shuts down David's attempt to give vague answers to direct questions. You'll notice him taking off his jacket and switching posture. And from here, the game is make or break. Either the detective breaks through and begins getting direct answers, the direct answers he needs, or David clams up completely. Let's see which happens. The only places that I go, usually, I go to 7-Eleven. Okay. The little Asian market if, you know, we need tubes and tobacco for rolling cigarettes, but that's not very often. Okay. Walgreens. Yeah. But Saturday, did you go to those places? I don't need to know where you generally go. I need to know where you went Saturday. I probably went to 7-Eleven at some point. Okay. Any idea what time? I go when I need something or want something. I understand, but that's why I'm asking you, like, any time? Do you remember wanting or needing something on Saturday? No, I don't, because I don't feel like I need to track every one of my movements and shit like that, because I don't need to have a locked tight schedule of what I'm doing and where I'm going. Generally, that is true. As Except, long as I'm at DOC on Thursdays between 1 and 3, yeah, and I make my appointments with ideal options, then it doesn't seem like a big deal to me where I go. Okay, unless you're being charged with murder, and it kind of is a big deal, right? Yeah, but if I don't pay attention to and keep track of these things, how the fuck am I going to tell you where I was without lying to you then, because I don't know exactly when I was there. Well, if you could at least try. Yeah, yeah, I would try. If, if it can rule you out as a suspect in a homicide, I would try. I would. Yeah, well, where I was Saturday during the day has no bearing on where I was Saturday night, Sunday morning. It does. Absolutely it does. Because I can show you wearing different clothes. Or I can show you wearing the same clothes. Right? That's pretty important. Do you agree? I can show that you were with somebody else and not with these people. People change their clothes. People meet other people. Oh, no, no question. But if I'm chipping away at that timeline, right, it can be exculpatory for you. 
meaning that it excludes you as a suspect. I know, my vernacular is very good. Sweet. So, you don't have to explain your words to me. But you can act like you're uh, upset about that, you're not. So, let's move past it. The fact that you're talking to me like I'm a child. You're not, I'm, I'm not talking liar, to you like a child. That's fucking upsetting. What did I, how did I talk to you like a child? Tell me when. I think you have I've to been explain a word that you're using to me. Most people don't know what that word means. I well, apologize most people are fucking idiots. Okay, you can pretend you're getting upset about it, but you're really not. No, what I'm getting upset about is you call me a liar. Because you lied. You lied. I don't actually think I called you a liar. I did say you lied, but I didn't think I actually called you a liar. So I'll call up to you now so we can just move past it. You are a liar. You have lied. It doesn't mean as a person in whole you're a liar, but you have lied to me in this conversation. I'm guessing five, six times already. So if somebody rapes somebody, they're not a rapist, they just raped? Mm, potentially. Are you That's a, the dumbest fucking thing I've heard. Are you a rapist? This conversation are, you, are you a rapist if you rape one person as a 12-year-old and then the rest of your life you don't do anything? Are you a rapist? I'm asking you. Uh, yeah. Okay, so if you murder somebody, are you a murderer your whole life? Or can you move past it? Um, you'd think that uh, they'd be a murderer because they've committed the act. I don't agree with you. And I do this for a living. One decision doesn't make a person what they are. Yeah, well, that's your opinion. That's true. So your opinion is that if you make a, one mistake, a split-second mistake, that that labels you for the rest of your life? Because that's not my opinion. You're going to pay for the crime that happened if you commit a murder. But once you do your debt to society, should you still be labeled a murderer? For me, no. And, and I should be one of the more harsher critics, I would think, doing what I do. One act doesn't make you what you are. Who you are makes you what you are. That's how I look at it. So if you look at it differently, I, I, you, I respect that you have a different opinion. Apparently not, because you refuse to accept anything I say, so. That doesn't even make sense. I have accepted a lot of what you've said. I accept that you met with Cody, that you acknowledges your, your phone conversations, that you were going to sell a gun, a 12-gauge, that you were at near Starbucks. Like, I, I, that's probably true. I believe that. You went to 7-Eleven. Those are, those are truths. I accept those things. What I don't accept is, you know, you lying about doing what you did. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous because I've given you an out. I've explained to you the backside of what happens, and you're still doing what you're doing. So it's fine. I mean, you, you make your choice, and you live with your choice. You're continuously trying to talk me into admitting to something I didn't do. Nope. I'm not trying to talk you into being honest. I don't care if you admit it or don't admit it. That's that's fine. I present a case to the prosecutor. My case file goes to the prosecutor. They review it. They make a decision. Right now, that case file says not cooperative. When presented with evidence that is clear that he was involved, lied about his involvement, said his friends could basically fuck off. They put themselves in that situation. Willing to set up his girlfriend to lie for him. The prosecutor is going to read that and be like, this guy's an asshole. Put that right over here. And that's the choice you're making. The other choice is the guy that feels bad for what happened. The guy that feels bad for his friends that he put in a bad spot. Or friend. I understand there's not much involvement between the other two of you. The guy that's not going to hang his friends and family out and expect them to lie for him. That guy goes in this pile. You can choose which pile you want to be in. I don't care. When it goes to court and you're presented as a monster who's out on the street doing robberies, killing people, 
no regard for anybody, doesn't care about the people close to him, bringing down those people with him, I don't care. Do your thing, man. Own it. It's your choice. But I honestly don't think you're that big a dick. I don't think you are. I don't know why you're doing what you're doing. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't fit. Do you want to tell me what happened or not? Couldn't tell you because I don't know. Fair enough. You good? You got in? No. All right. We'll end up to close the tape out for you, right, man? Should have done that a long time ago when I said the conversation was over. Oh, okay. Whatever you say, partner. Signature there. That just was that you waved your whites in the beginning because you did. I just I forgot to have you do it. Read this out loud for me. See, I can't do that because uh, I'm not the only person that spoke on that tape, so. Okay, so it says, I, David Wright, declare that the facts stated on this tape are true and correct to the best of my knowledge. My statement has been made freely, voluntarily, and without threats or promises of any kind. This only speaks to what you said, not what Detective Brenneman or I said. It doesn't exclude that either, though. So You'll fear right in there that uh, it excludes what Detective Brenneman and Detective uh, Atkins said. It's just a perjury statement, man. It's saying what you said is the truth. It's the standard one that's on the form that uh, everybody signs. So, no, I'm not going to sign that, and I can't write an exclusion to a form that's a standard form. So, why not? It's handwritten on there in blue ink. Yeah, in the presence of the two people that it excludes. You're on With tape, video man. Tape so to what? document it. Yeah, no problem. Just write refuse to sign then for me. Will you write that? Nothing. She won't. Okay. Well, let me ask you, is everything you told me the, the truth today? Yes, it is. 100%? Yep. No lies? Yep. Okay. Very good. So, I'm gonna did I him. promise you or threaten you in any way? No, you made plenty of threats, but... I did? Yeah. I don't believe I did, but... Not to my harm, to harm my person or anything like that, but you've made threats. I don't feel and like I did, but... Did it? Did it? Did my the did the way I spoke to you adjust the way you talked to me, in any way, and and mean that what you said was not accurate or true? No, but you seem to think that it is, which Fair is enough. why this conversation is definitely over. Fair enough. But as far as the perjury statement goes, what you said is true and correct. Did I promise you anything, at any time? Are you thinking, or...? If you wish to speak to me again, you should do so with an attorney present. Fair enough, man. I'm going to write in refused. So questioning and statement ended at 1326 hours. Did you turn it off? <laughs> and that was the story of David Wright, who was ultimately sentenced to prison for 40 years. It looks like David's superior vernacular wasn't enough to overcome the piles of evidence the police had against him. Let this be a cautionary tale. A jack-in-the-box open 24 hours is not a place you want to be. Trust me, I used to spend several hours a week in one when I was a student. This one, specifically, uh, for which I have very fond memories. The food was good. The restaurant was clean. 
A customer with obvious mental illness was carrying on, banging on glass windows, being very verbal, very loudly when she exposed herself. Yes, it was her breasts. She was seen, but ignored by all the employees. So there's that. The restaurant always has this sort of thing going on. Yeah, that pretty much sums up my experience there. I visited this particular branch four or five times to be sure. Every single time my order was wrong, then wrong again when I asked them to fix it. Aggressive homeless people run amok in the filthy restaurant while the staff idly watches and screws up your order. Even though posted hours are until 1pm, I once walked up to a closed dining room at 940. The staff answered when I called but did not explain the early closing, simply telling me to come back tomorrow. Yeah, this this is uh, pretty common. I remember homeless people were in there all the time, just chilling out. But back then it was 24 hours. I guess they, they changed the time. All right. So a woman in drive through only spoke broken English. And when we were when we asked most questions, she only replied back in another language. She didn't know what the ingredients were on the burgers. She just kept saying, welcome to Jack in the Box. And I don't know. <laughs> she she wouldn't ask anyone else. We put up to the window in hope of communicating with her. However, she just ignored us and took the next person's order. We just had to leave and go to a different restaurant. <laughs> All right. That's unfortunate. Yeah, anyway, this place sucks. On a final note, if you're making a decent enough income to where your bank account balance is always positive, but you're not investing your money, you're hurting your future self. Inflation is going to destroy many people's wealth over the coming years, but it doesn't have to happen to you. Put your money to work for you with stock and options. After I started this YouTube channel, I've been trading a lot less than before. Whereas before I was trading every day, now I only make trades of the highest conviction. In the last 90 days, all of my trades have been winners. If you wish to join me, visit the link below. When you sign up, you'll receive an email every time I plan to open a trade. Just copy what I do, and you don't need to spend any time researching investments. I'll even help you get your trading account set up if you don't have one already. You should check out the link below for sure.